everyone this is tina with tiaz's treasures and tonight i have for you quick unboxing and um a few cards i don't know how many yet <laughs> with pink and mains uh card kit for the month of may now this card kit i believe is called thinking of you possibly it's uh it always comes in this beautiful pink pot box with this uh wrap up in some nice tissue paper it's always so pretty looking and i'm just making a mess of things here with that beautiful card stock which is now i believe pink and main uh, has its own card stock instead of using basil we get our handy dandy envelope as always it's smaller than the one that Simon Says Stamps has, but it is still nice. You just have to cut your cardstock in half to fit in here. So let's see. Thinking of you. Ah, nope. The Crafty May 2022 Crafty Courtyard Kit is called Wildflowers. Thinking of you is just the dye that we get this month. It's real pretty. So we get a beautiful assortment of sequins i love these some enamel dots very pretty color palette i love it it's so bright i love the purples and the pinks i just i love everything about it we get some beautiful uh pattern paper which is now in a paper pad as opposed to loose and it is alcohol it looks like alcohol marker now notice how thick this paper is. It's got a slight gloss on it. Very nice. It's got to be 100, 120 pound, I would think at least. So these are all variations of alcohol inks, front and back. I just, I think they're so pretty. Look at those, oh my gosh. Yes, love them. Okay, that's that. We get a really fun stencil with, uh, looks like chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemums on there. I love that. That is so pretty. We got our stamp set. Look at that. It kind of reminds me a little bit, again, of Simon Says stamps. Um, you got the silhouette flowers and greenery. And we got some sentiments, sending love, best wishes, wishing you well. This too shall pass. Thank you for your kindness. You are in my thoughts and prayers. Little butterflies. Just love it. This is going to be great. And for our die, we have a frame that will cut out the uh, scallops on the outside or the scallops on the inside. It's got the piece cutting piece right there, so it will cut this apart, but you could probably keep them together still. And the die says thinking of you with a shadow layer. And then for our embossing folder this month, we get a buffalo plaid. So that's fun. And the new pink and main cardstock. This is, I'd say, 120 pound too. A purple, a teal green, it's very pretty. A deep navy-ish blue, a navy, I don't know. Ooh, a real pretty pink. Gorgeous, like sunshiny orangey yellow. Oh, here's like a lemonade yellow. So now next to that, that looks orange, but on its own, it looks yellow. So this had more orange, yellow, and then two sheets of, I don't know, it's white, but is it the ice rink white that she used to have? I don't know, but like I said, beautiful color palette. So moving on to making some cards. Let's see what I can do. For card number one, I took a circle die and I cut out some of the pattern paper the, the, and uh, also took the embossing folder and embossed a piece of the orange card stock. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take some of these um, stamps and I am going to stamp on the circle. 
kind of like um, the stickers, the envelope stickers that come in the kit, which I forgot to show you, but uh, they were there. So I'm going to take one of the stamps um, along with the sentiment that says best wishes and a little butterfly stamp. And I'm going to stamp them with the VersaFine um, Onyx Black Ink. Um, now that's a pigment ink and I, I love the way that just shows up when you use it. But I am going to have to heat emboss it on this glossy paper so I don't smear it all over the place. So I end up um, stamping it, I believe, two or three times. I think I'm only going to show you once. You don't need to be uh, watching me stamp it over and over and over again. Or at least I didn't think I was going to show me stamping it over and over again. I guess maybe I am. Now, I end up smearing the best wishes, <laughs> I mean, which, uh, and when I tried to wipe it off a little bit, it, it didn't go anywhere. So I, I will end up fixing that. But first, we're just going to use some clear embossing powder. And I have a bad habit of forgetting to use my, um, my powder tool so you don't, get embossing powder all over the place. Now, I wasn't too worried about it here because I am using the clear embossing powder. So even if I got a few specks where they shouldn't belong, you're not really going to see them like you would with a black or a white powder. Um, I really do like using clear over black. I mean, I could have used black embossing powder here, but the clear just um, does a wonderful job. And it just heats up really nice, nicely. That was Simon Says Stamp, um, fine detail clear embossing powder I used. And here I am just stamping, using a scrap paper to stamp out the best wishes. So we're going to fix where it was all smeared on our little circle. And I remembered my powder tool this time. See, got it. Remembered it. And uh, I am just stamping right there in the corner, again, using the same um, Versa Fine Black Onyx ink. And now I am going to use a die to cut out that sentiment, the Simon Says uh, Stamp Sentiment dies, because I want to make sure I frame it up real nice and get it nice and even. And um, sometimes when I stamp, my stamp lines aren't exactly straight. So by using the sentiment uh, dies, I can frame that sentiment out nice and straight. And so we're just gluing it right over our mistake. And I think it looks like we planned it that way. It's really pretty. And now we are just going to decide which side of our embossing we're going to use. And I've got it, um, got a bunch of foam tape. We're going to pop up that, that orange panel there. And as I put it down, I mess it up. This card was just a comedy of errors, but I managed to fix them all. Now I get it too far over and this tape doesn't really want to budge. Once that foam tape goes down, it just likes to stay put. So, you know, I carry on with this card, but the more I look at it, the more it kind of bugs me that it's just um, uneven. Um, I've got it showing too much white on the left-hand side. But, like I said, we do fix that in the end. Right now, I'm putting a few of uh, the enamel dots. I just put three enamel dots kind of scattered around. Nice odd number odd number for an odd person and um, so what I end up doing is right here real quick you're gonna see I just cut that panel right off and now I put it on a new card base and it was perfect <laughs> so moving on to card number two now this is a piece of the teal green paper and uh, I use the yellow for the sentiment and I am just going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp right on the teal paper. 
and I've got this piece of um, pattern paper that has got the nice green and blues that I am going to use to ground my, my little flowers. And I am going to use three of the little butterflies on this because we're going to make it a cute little thinking of you card. And I just love the way the one flower with the three butterflies just fills up that empty space and it makes me happy. Now, originally I thought about combining the teal cardstock with the purple cardstock, and it was kind of striking, but um, in the end I opted just to have the teal with the yellow. I think it, it's um, a more calming card than the teal and the purple would have been. You know, the teal and purple, like I said, they're they're striking together, but they, they're not calming at all. <laughs> Quite the opposite. They might be a good wake-up card, you know. Wake up and smell the coffee. So here I am stamping this out. And again, we are going to have to heat emboss this so I don't end up smearing this pigment ink. Now, I think for silhouettes, the pigment ink just works the best because I think it's the darkest and it just gives some great coverage. I love it for sentiments. I love it for silhouettes. And uh, so I've got that. I did not show myself heat embossing this one. Uh, for whatever reason, I must have edited it out. And I'm just using some tape. Uh, Simon says... Uh, that runner tape here and I am going to get this card nice and straight by using my my little score buddy and so we're going to glue down my little grounding strip and I think that was a scrap of paper from the pattern paper that we took the circle out of and I was lucky enough to have some green blue on the back that just matched with this card I'm doing now so that is five and a quarter by five and a half by four and a quarter. It's an A2 card, standard A2. I am just poking out all the stuff in the thinking of you. This is the sentiment that came in the kit, and it's all one piece. Even little little tittles above the eyes are just one piece. Now I'm going to take that sentiment and I'm going to use the uh, new Simon Says stamp. Um, that paper and I love this because you can just you know put your sentiment right there kind of burnish it down and come up with a adhesive on the back you don't have to remember ahead of time to put the adhesive paper on the back of the cardstock although you can it's your choice I just kind of like being able not being you know tied down to what I want to do I can decide to use glue if I want or just the this adhesive now and I've got a piece of vellum that I took out of my stash that I used as a um, the background for the thinking of you. For the shadow layer there because it gives us a very nice shadow. And the only thing with some of these all-in-one sentiments is they can be a bit much to try to, to center on your shadow layer. And you hear my dog Bruce barking there in the background. I told him to be quiet. I was doing a voiceover, but he doesn't listen very well. I'm just surprised uh, we don't hear Eddie. Eddie's got a higher pitched bark. That's how we can tell the two of them apart. Eddie's also got a much fatter little body. He's like a potato on legs. But uh, his bark is all like... Um, the 25% Chihuahua that he's got inside him that, you know, I had no idea till we got him. And I had to do a DNA test on him because I just love those because finally you can tell what breeds your dogs are. Now, mine are all, they're, they're pure mutts, but I was able to see what kind of breeds they have in them. So this is my Thinking of You card. Now we're going to put a few enamel dots on this card as well. Again, I think I only use... Uh, three enamel dots on every card that has enamel dots on it. I don't know why. I just didn't go crazy with them today. I just wanted the minimal cards for like the minimalist um, stamps that were, were on these. 
So moving on to card number three. Now this one, I took the stencil. Now I used some pixie spray and I got the back of the stencil with that. And I'm still going to tape it down just because I want to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So see, Eddie chewed up my, my tape there. It fell on the ground and he got it before I could take it away from him. Now he he's not he doesn't show up a whole lot of things just uh things he thinks are his and he thought that was his so I'm gonna use some distress distress texture paste and the only purple ink I have which is some wilted violet distress oxide um, refiller and I am going to mix that little bit of purple ink in because I want to tone on tone here. Did you see when I opened that Distress Texture Paste with that, the way it just was like perfect on the inside, it was like, oh, so satisfying. Didn't want to mess it up, but didn't have a choice. So I am getting all that uh, mixed in, and now I am just going to put it all over my stencil. And I was trying not to make too much extra of this paste, because you can't put it back away because we colored it. So I figured I could always make more, but I actually had enough to finish this entire stencil. And I had to throw about a little bit, maybe a half a teaspoon away, because we had it just a, a perfect amount almost. I couldn't have done another stencil, but I threw away the least amount that I had to. And we're just going to... Peel this off here and it's so satisfying to see it come off and I just think it is gorgeous. So I let it dry and uh, here it is. We're going to make a shaker card using that and that's going to be on the bottom. And so I'm just going to tape this that bottom um, the bottom stenciled chrysanthemum pattern to some pink cardstock because I'm going to use a pink thinking of you sentiment and so I thought framing it out with the same color would look very nice and the tone on tone purple has got kind of almost a pink shade kind of almost going for it so here is the scalloped die um, the scallop yeah, the scallop frame that I die cut from some more purple cardstock. And I put some double sided tape going all the way around it. And that kept the two sides together. And I'm just putting some acetate that I cut down right over that. Now I kept the tissue paper on it because I didn't want to get like fingerprints all over the thing. And I have got some brand new Heffy Doodle thick tape here foam tape that I bought especially to do shaker cards now I didn't end up showing you uh, the whole packaging like I wanted to but it's three millimeter thick um, heffy doodle tape which it's got like a five millimeter wide and three millimeters deep and it is nice and thick so I put it all around my frame here and the big thing you want to make sure is that there's no gaps where your sequins or glitter or whatever else you end up putting in your shaker cards can fall out of. And so I am just cutting down some pieces here. I don't measure because I find it's a little bit easier just to cut off the excess than to try to measure that great big roll and get it perfect that way. You know, you don't want to waste the stuff, but it's really a pain trying to measure out how much you're using while it's still on the roll sometimes. So I am just going to put my sequins right in the middle of the card here, and that way I can flip over the frame right on top of it. And these sequins are so pretty. I probably could have used um, the whole the whole pouch of them. Um, I didn't want to use them all up, but plus this is the first time I was using that uh, foam tape and I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to do. I didn't want it to be um, too 
too shallow and it ended up being nice and thick so I could have fit a whole lot more in there. As you can see the static on my my acetate just made my sequins jump right up and they are sticking to the acetate now but um, it's not that bad so I just figure I'm going to leave them there. I'm not going to try to get them off. They're not going anywhere and I just flip that frame upside down and put it right on my card and I center it really nice it's not too hard to do and uh, I just I love it I think it's almost a perfect amount of uh, sequins and they shake really nice and now I am just going to take some more of this dot paper and I'm going to put this sentiment on there and I'm going to burnish it down. This one I just use my fingers to burnish it down instead of um, using the bone folder. So that one sometimes can be a little bit of a pain because it likes to skip on me and I end up like almost tearing the paper if I'm not careful. So my fingers do a fine job burnishing. And you can't see it on this but as you pull away the um, the sentiment from that paper you can almost see like strings of adhesive kind of like a mozzarella cheese on a pizza <laughs> you'll have to buy some just to see what I mean it's kind of cool looking so again I've got this I'm putting it on vellum and I'm just going to use some glue now right there and I've got this sped way up I don't glue this quickly as a matter of fact usually uh the beginning starts to dry before I get to the end and we're just going to stick that down and we're going to put a weight on that there while I try to uh, clean up just a little bit and we're going to glue that down to a card base this one of course you can see that we've got this card made portrait style I wanted to make sure that thinking of you fit inside that frame nicely and um, it worked out a little bit better portrait style than landscape and so this is it for card number three now for our last card here I've got some more pink cardstock and some of the um, pattern paper that matches really pretty and we are going to use three of the um, bigger foliage stamps two of the flowers and one of the the leaves and I'm just kind of arranging them so they can all fit on the bottom I've got part of their stems going off of the edge and I'm going to use one more butterfly and I'm going to use the sentiment you are in my thoughts and prayers now I thought about like not doing everything at once you know because I am going to heat emboss this but I have a tendency to warp my cardstock, so I just figured I would um, just heat, you know, stamp it out and get all the the embossing powder on there right away. And that way, hopefully, I didn't warp the cardstock too much. Even though, you know, yeah, I know you're supposed to do the front and the back and heat it up, and I try, but I still have a tendency to. Uh, warp it sometimes if I'm not careful so here I am I'm gonna stamp that down with my ink it's gonna take a, a few two or three stamps to get this nice and dark and I just I, I love all of these cards I don't think uh, there was a bad card in this batch and I just love this stamp set and um, uh, there was a few other ideas I had but it would have entailed fussy cutting out these stamps and uh, I just didn't have it in me today to do much fussy cutting so that's why you got four cards instead of five or six or seven because I just I was I was being lazy I didn't want to fussy cut I looked to see if there were any matching dies on the website. I was almost hoping there were because I would like to um, 
use this uh, like on top of some embossing or on top of the, the stencil stuff that you can't do without fussy cutting. So I got that nice and heat embossed and it turned out really nice. And now we are just going to tape the pink cardstock right on our card base. Get that nice and even. And take some tape runner and we are going to put our little alcohol marker, our, our faux alcohol marker uh, pattern paper right in the center. Now I'm going to bring in three. Three is the number, not four, not two, but three. Three epoxy dots. And um, that's going to be it for this card. So if you enjoyed these cards, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me tremendously. Or even better yet, subscribe. I really would love to get 500 subscribers. So these are my four cards today. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Please come again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.